Hi class, it's Mr. Butler. I'm here with a quick video on paragraph five from the short story, The Mask of the Red Death by Edgar Allan Poe. Thank you so much for all your hard work, especially with annotating the vocabulary words of underlined words that have indicated. Those are really important to look up and put in the comments so that you understand exactly what the definition is so that you can understand what the text is saying to answer the questions. This is a really scary story. It's about a pandemic. As we see, it's a wealthy prince who takes all of his friends and hides in an abbey, which is like a monastery. You can think of it as a castle, in order to stay safe and healthy um, and not get infected. There's some pretty explicit language that shows the prince does not care about the peasants outside of the castle. He can say the external world can care about themselves. One misconception I noticed, this is a piece of feedback that I realized from a pattern of assessment that I found, which was in paragraph, um, paragraph two, where it talks about the walls and the courtiers bolting the gates shut. A lot of you looked up some of the vocabulary words there and inferred that he was doing that to build up defenses, almost in like a military sense. And while that would normally be the case for a walled in abbey or a walled in castle, he's not doing, he's not um, reinforcing the walls to prevent an army from coming in. He's reinforcing the walls to prevent the disease from coming in, to prevent people who are infected with the Red Death from spreading it to his safe group of intimate friends. The Red Death, by the way, is a made-up disease. It's not real, but the symptoms are described as just bleeding from your face, um, which is horrific. And Edgar Allan Poe would have seen horrible things. He lost his wife to tuberculosis, which was an important part of the documentary that you saw for the second assignment that I gave on May 7th. Let's take a quick look at the text. Um, this is the vocabulary annotation procedure. We're gonna continue with this. We see a grandfather clock here. Um, this is the kind of clock that's described in this paragraph. And what's most important about the clock is the sound that it makes when it chimes on the hour. It was within this apartment, uh, this apartment referring to the prince's apartment, the seventh apartment, which was red and made anyone standing in it look like they had the red death. It was within this apartment also that there stood against the western wall a gigantic clock of ebony. Once again, to look this up, we're going to select, we're going to right click, we're going to define. We're going to see that this means uh, it's a color, black, blackish or a dark brown uh, timbre. We can simply um, copy that, go back here, make sure this is selected, comment, paste, voila, and I've got the vocabulary word right over there. Um, it's pendulum. Uh, we have another one here, which if I define again, uh, define pendulum, tells me uh, a weight hung from a fixed point so that it can swing freely backward and forward. Now, if I use my inference making skills, I can take this, I can copy it here, I can make a comment. And I wonder what has a pendulum, this clock, this gigantic clock. And the way that these old mechanical clocks worked is that by the force of gravity, this pendulum would swing back and forth and the counterweights would help the clock um, operate with its gears. So its pendulum swung to and fro with a dull, heavy, monotonous clang. That means with the same boring tone, monotone, one tone. And when the minute hand made the circuit of the face, the face referring to this part of the clock, and the hour was to be stricken, there came the br from the brazen lungs of the clock a sound which was clear and loud and deep and exceedingly musical, but of so peculiar a note and emphasis that at each lapse of an hour, the musicians of the orchestra were constrained to pause momentarily in their performance to hearken to the sound and thus the waltzers perforce ceased their evolutions and there was a brief disconcert of the whole gay company and while the chimes of the clock yet rang. Okay, so that is a very long sentence very, very long. Um, you can break it up by the commas and the punctuation. You see two semicolons. These could very well be sentences by themselves, but let's just break this up real quick. Uh, from the lungs of the clock, that's really strange. We don't really think of a clock as having lungs. This is personification, but we can assume that it has some kind of valve or maybe like an organ, some kind of pipe or wind-based musicality that creates this sound so exceedingly musical that every hour, so as the clock chimes to mark the hour, the musicians, remember, they have this um, 
party atmosphere going on, the, quote, appliances of pleasure the prince brings with him, of the whole orchestra, he brings a band for his entertainment, were constrained to pause. So this clock makes such a weird sound that the musicians stop their performance. They stop playing to listen to it. Um, and not just them, but the dancers and the whole party, the whole gay company, the whole happy guests of the party stop. And they uh, be, grow pale and uh, look confused. Um, that's how strange this sounds. It kind of makes me think of like the bell that rings in class. Uh, it kind of has this strange, or had back when we had regular class, this strange sort of arresting uh, effect, almost like the effect of surprise, even though we're used to that bell chiming on the hour um, every day. But when the echoes had fully ceased, a light laughter at once pervaded uh, the assembly. The musicians looked at each other and smiled as if their own nervousness and folly had made whispering vows each to the other that the next chiming of the clock should produce in them no similar emotion. And then after the lapse of 60 minutes, which embraced 3,600 seconds of time that flies, there came yet another chiming of the clock. And then were the same disconcert and tremulousness and meditation as before. So even though they promised themselves every hour, oh, that was weird, but we're not going to get freaked out about that again next hour, the same weird effect happens. And they have this line, this parenthetical about time. Poe breaks down an hour into 3,600 seconds. And that's really interesting because... Sometimes in a pandemic, when you're in a quarantine and you're at home, the effect of your perception of time can change. And it's almost like time passes with that slowness. Um, and the repetitiveness of the clock reminds us of how um, monotonous this experience of being at home can be. And that, that I just said, that little piece of analysis is directly related to, I'm going to skip down to five, Clocks are obvious symbols of time, but what about the passage of time during a pandemic? Could this clock symbolize is really important. And I want you to think about how our feelings about time change when we're locked in a, in a pandemic and how that happens with this really odd and gothic and spooky horror story clock in this passage. Just quickly before we leave uh, to address some of the questions, how does Poe describe the sound the clock makes? We definitely looked at that with the brazen lungs and its excessive musicality and a peculiar note with an emphasis. All of those pieces of evidence you could use for this one. How does Poe's personification, the fact that the clock has lungs kind of makes me think that it's screaming in a way, which is horrifying. You can make that interpretation for number two. What effect does the sound of the clock have on the musicians? Well, we talked about how they stop. They feel confused and odd and weirded out and then they sort of laugh it off and say it's not going to happen again and then invariably it does every time and this is really i can't really answer this one for you this is your thinking question why do you think the party goers never get used to the frightening sound um they hear it every hour and yet every hour it surprises them why don't they get used to it and in a symbolic sense why is it that we can't really get used to a pandemic despite of the repetitiveness of our lives. And I think that's what Edgar Allan Poe is getting at in this paragraph. And isn't this a cool clock? Maybe I'll get a clock like this uh, for my house. Not this color, it's, that's, that's a little, I don't know, the color looks good. You tell me what you think in the comments. All right, bye guys. Thanks for tuning in, good luck.